to find out who the favorite is for the 2024 SEC preseason rankings? From top contenders to dark horses. I've got all the stats, all the analytics, and the best predictions you need to get hyped for the 2024 SEC football season. Let's dive into it right away, guys. Starting at the bottom with Vanderbilt Commodores, a team that I do not think is going to make any noise in the SEC. They're going to win all three of their non-conference games, uh, but I do think they... Actually, I do think they finished 2-10. That was a typo there. I think they lose to Virginia Tech. They beat Alcorn State, beat Georgia Tech State. I think they finished 0-8 in the SEC. They have the eighth hardest strength of schedule in the country. Another disappointing season for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Number 15, Mississippi State, a team that is not going to finish uh, much ahead of them. At fourth overall strength of schedule they face, which is kind of remarkable because they face one of the easiest non-conference strength of schedules, Eastern Michigan or Eastern Kentucky, Arizona State, Toledo, and uh, Massachusetts. I think they get uh, a win at least three of those games. But their SEC, I, I don't think they get one SEC championship or uh, one SEC conference game uh, victory. They place Florida, Texas, Georgia, Texas A&M, Arkansas, Tennessee, Missouri, and Ole Miss. Not a chance this team even gets even sniffs a bowl game appearance. Number 14, Arkansas, a team that I think will just like Mississippi State, Maryville will not do take a dent in the SEC uh, conference landscape. Only win I think they get is against Mississippi State. They finish four and eight overall, 20th hardest strength of schedule. Not much able to say about Arkansas. Bottom quarter of the entire SEC this year. Number 13, South Carolina Gamecocks. A team that loses basically everybody. They're 124th in returning production. They lost their quarterback, running back, receivers. They have a, they have a decent uh, recruiting class coming in, but I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. They faced, a, once again, a top 10 overall strength of schedule. Uh, I don't think they can do anything. They get one conference win. That's going to be against Vanderbilt. The rest of the season is not going to be favorable for them. Uh, they get the 4-8 and overall. Not enough to get to the bowl win. And they uh, finish bottom quarter of the SEC yet again. Number 12, Kentucky. Team that finished 7-6 last year. I don't think they improved much off of that. 119th in returning production this year. I think at best they get the 3-5 and five in conference. Uh, they'll, they'll go 4-0 in their non-conference. Uh, but I think 7-5 is the absolute cap for this team. Uh... Not going to be too much. Another mid-year for the Kentucky Wildcats in football. Number 11, Auburn Tigers. A team that finished 6-7 and seven last year. Uh, they have the 10th most returning production, including their quarterback, uh, uh, what's his name, Thorne, Peyton Thorne. Uh, number 33rd, strength of schedule. I just don't see them doing much uh, as well in the SEC. 2-6 and six in conference is my prediction. 4-0 and oh in non-conference, but 6-6 six and six overall. Uh, not too much to say about the Auburn Tigers. Yet again, it could be a, a very, very... Uh, underwhelming year uh, down there in Auburn. Number 10, the Florida Gators, one of the most interesting teams in the entire country this year because last year they finished 5-7. and seven. They're 20th rated nationally and they have the number one overall strength of schedule. Now, my boy Kelly Ford did this little graphic where it showed the number of regular season wins required to be at least in the discussion as an at-large bid. As you see, teams that need to win at least 12 games, uh, 11, 11 games, teams that need to win at least 10 games, and some teams that need to be, you know, uh, win at least nine games. So for nine and three, they're in the CFP discussion. But as you see at the top here, the only team that has a chance to be eight and four, at least be in the CFP at large discussion, is the Florida Gators. And that is based solely off of their strength of schedule, which is one of the hardest in recent memory, possibly the hardest in the last decade. They play uh, Miami uh, week one uh, at home, they face Texas AM at home week three. Uh, Game, give me against Mississippi State. Uh, I think they win against UCF. And I think they have a ch good chance against Kentucky. But the last five games they play, after their second bye week in Week 9, Weeks 10 through 14, Georgia and neutral site game, at the, on the road at Texas, LSU at home, Ole Miss at home, and on the road at Florida State. The hardest stretch of college football the entire 24, 24 season. Even though they're rated 20th nationally in the preseason rankings, I don't think they even get to a bowl game with that schedule. I think they finish 5-7. and seven. Only two conference games they win are against Mississippi State and Kentucky. Not a chance to even get be a dent in the CFP chase. I think Florida is going to be another another year where they don't even get to a bowl game. And Billy Napier is going to be absolute volcanic heat if he does not make it to a bowl game this year. Hot seat will be volcanic hot. Number nine, Missouri. A team that finished 11-2 last year was preseason pick 10th and shocked everybody by getting to 11 wins. Uh, I think this year, their preseason rate number 16, I think they get to at least 9 wins this year again. Uh, everybody's doubting them. I think they're going to be uh, pretty good off this year. They get to 9-3. and three. I don't think they'll be in a CFP at-large discussion. 
uh, but they'll still be one of the uh, upper echelon bowl games. I think they lose to Texas A&M, lose to Alabama, and lose to Oklahoma. Still get a really, really good year. Uh, above average team, not a great team uh, for the Missouri Tigers. Number eight, Texas A&M, a team that is hungry for a, a good, not even a decent year, but a good year. They, after all the recruiting the last three years, they finally let go of Jimbo Fisher after his absolute waste of a hundred million dollar contract for this program. Uh, I think they're due for a good year. They're 15th nationally in preseason uh, ranking, 32nd in strength of schedule. I think they get to six and two in conference and nine and three overall. I think they lose to Notre Dame. I think they lose to Texas, and I think they lose to Florida or LSU. The rest of their games, though, I, I think they have a pretty good chance of winning. Florida is going to be a toss-up to me. I think they win that game. The rest of the games, they have at least a 58% chance of winning. I think Texas A&M is going to be... I, I'm going to say if the over-under is 8.5, eight, eight, uh, eight I would take the over on Texas A&M and get them to 9 wins this year. Number 7, the Tennessee Volunteers. Preseason rated number 12th nationally. They're 40th in trick to schedule. They have a 90th in returning production. I think they're going to finish uh, just like the A&M. They're going to finish 5-3 and three in conference. 9-3 and three overall. They're going to get uh, get all four wins in their non-conference against Chattanooga, NC State, Kent State, and against UTEP. Uh, kind of a weak strength of schedule in the non-conference. Uh, three games to lose to in-conference. Oklahoma, Alabama, and at Georgia. Uh, just like AM, and they're going to get the nine wins uh, overall, but not be in the CFP at-large discussion. We'll be in the discussion for an upper echelon bowl game, though. Number six, Ole Miss. I think a team just like the Penn State Nittany Lions, a team that has just been so close to the CFP chase as an at-large if the 12th team was happened the last 10 years. I think if they, this year though, it's going to finally happen. I think their only two losses will be uh, on the road at LSU and, and Georgia at home. I think the rest of the games they win, they beat Oklahoma, they beat uh, Florida, they beat Arkansas, they beat South Carolina, and they beat Kentucky. And they have one of the easier, I wouldn't say it's easy, it's 25th nationally, but to me, some of these games are pretty easy. Uh, and I think they're going to get to the CFP, finally, as an at-large, get the 10-2 in, in this SEC overall. And I think they're going to be one of the dark, dark horse teams to finally clinch a first-ever CFP spot. Number five, Oklahoma. One of the two teams that moved over from the Big 12 to the SEC, Oklahoma and Texas. Preseason rated number 10th nationally, 5th in the SEC, 13th hardest strength of schedule, so it's nothing, no uh, no easy road here for the Sooners. Uh, although they lost their quarterback, Dylan Gabriel, to Oregon and the transfer portal, they, they're 87th in returning production. I think they get to 5-3 and three in SEC. I think they lose to Texas. I think they lose to Ole Miss, and I think they lose at LSU. I think they get it done against Alabama at home, though. I think it's going to be a major upset for them. They're going to beat Missouri. And I think they're going to beat Auburn and Tennessee as well. Get to 9-3. and three. It's going to be a pretty successful year for Oklahoma. And I think with those wins against Alabama and Missouri on the road uh, and at Auburn on the road, I think it's going to be a major discussion for them at 9-3 to get the CFP at-large bid. Number four, LSU, a team that uh, finished 10-3 and three for the uh, 10 wins for the second consecutive year. Ninth uh, overall in returning... Uh, Nationally ranked 103rd though in returning production. I think Brian Kelly though is has a really good recruiting class And I think this LSU squad with even with the 15th rated strength schedule Gets the six wins in conference ten wins overall only losses to at a and on the road and Alabama at home in week 11 Another yet again just like Ole Miss a team that can get the ten wins has an outside chance of being a CFP at large bid from the SEC top three here Texas Last year's uh, CFP semifinalists, Big 12, finally won the Big 12, got to the CFP finally. This year, they returned Quinn Ewers, their quarterback, they preseason fifth nationally. Uh, they're 26 overall strength of schedule. Uh, they, they, besides Colorado State and UTSA and ULM, they faced Michigan on the road week two. That will be a very, very uh, interesting game to see how both teams go. I said it in my last video with the Big 10. Depending on whoever wins this game, it will be an absolute... Like this will be the story how each team's rest of the season will go. If, Mich if Texas can beat Michigan, I think they get to at least 11 wins. If Michigan beats Texas, they get to at least 10 wins themselves. Uh, I do think Texas will beat Michigan though on the road. I think because their quarterback is a second-year guy, he's a five-star, he's just a much better passer. I think Texas only losses will will be to Georgia in Week Eight, but I still think only at seven one, eleven one overall, they get back to the SEC championship game. Number two rated preseason is Alabama. I think. Uh, they're number second overall nationally 
uh, in the pre- preseason rankings. But they, this is a new, uh, I guess, era or new, a new era for them with Kalen DeBoer. And their strength of schedule this year is kind of something that's surprising. They never finished in the top 20 in any uh, before the conference championship games. Never finished in the top 20 in strength of schedule. They are third hardest in the entire country this year. Uh, even though they faced Western Kentucky, South Florida, and Mercer in the, in the uh, non-conference. On the road at Wisconsin. Georgia in week five. That will be one of the biggest regular season matchups in recent memory. At Tennessee, Missouri at home, at LSU, at Oklahoma, and Auburn. I mean, I think this team has a legit chance to get to 11 wins, but I think they'll get to 10-2. and two. They'll lose to Oklahoma and lose to Georgia, and they finish just outside the top two in the SEC, in SEC race because I think Georgia is the best team in the SEC. I think they'll finish 12-0 and 0 this year. I think they're going to beat Alabama. They're going to beat Texas even on the road. And the rest of their schedule, I mean, the hardest game they have from then is uh, at, on the road at Ole Miss, but I think they get it done there. They have 14th rated strength of schedule. Uh, I think it's going to be Georgia against Texas in the SEC championship game. Um, and I think, obviously, the winner of that will get a top four bid. But the loser of that will probably get the number five slot as the best at-large uh, team in the CFP for the 2024 season. That is your SEC breakdown for the 2024 preseason. Do you agree with these rankings, or do you see some surprises on the horizon? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into all the Power 4 conferences. See you in the next video.